Hello everyone, I'm Reena Agustin. You're watching Community Impact. My guest today is Connor Adams, the Senior Associate from Orem Private Wealth. Hello, Connor. Hi, Reena. Thanks for having me on. Thank you. Thank you for accepting. And uh, today I'm sure we're going to uh, share a wealth of knowledge about 132 Visa to our viewers. So tell us a background about yourself. Yeah, so basically I'm, uh, I'm born and raised in, in Brisbane, Australia. So I uh, worked in across a couple of different companies in the finance industry, um, Citibank, Bendigo Bank within Australia, and um, recently started at Orem Private Wealth. I um, have really found myself having a bit of an interest in the, the migration space and some of, some of the solutions that can come from that. So, uh, yeah, it's really interested and obviously, um, yeah, keen to share a few sort of ideas and, mm -hmm. and, and share some of the solutions we have as well. Why migration? Yeah, very good question. So I think it's something that came from personally. Um, I have always been a bit of a, a, a travel, a traveller. Um, always been interested in geography, mm -hmm. um, and also a, attempting to learn certain uh, different other languages apart from English. So. Um, I have dabbled in trying to learn uh, Mandarin Chinese, for example, wow. um, which ended up kind of tying into meeting a lot of different people from all over Asia and, and specifically Asia, but all over the world. Uh, and that sort of meant that, you know, I found myself, you know, hearing what they needed, hearing what they were interested in and also um, hearing about sort of their, their journeys from perhaps through Asia onto Australia. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what what is your role, exact role in in uh, Orem Private Wealth? Yep. So, um, yep. Title is uh, senior associate. So, essentially, I'm going about um, looking after clients that may be looking for a solution to to come to Australia to for the betterment of both Australia and and their own life. Um, and that's where uh, what I'll be discussing today, the 132A um, business talent visa, and the the solution that we've come up with at Orem Private Wealth. Um, we we focus on servicing clients, um, answering any questions, and trying to take the trying to take the pain out of the process that, that can come and, and any pain points that do come from attempting to migrate here. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I actually saw that there is a special scheme, if, if that's the right word I have to use. Yep. So so if you can talk a bit about it, it would be great. Yeah, absolutely. So the scheme is based on um, the government's uh, a government supported scheme that essentially is uh, attempting to seek investor funds from outside of the country to service a much needed part of Australia, which is the NDIS, um, and NDIS accommodation for some of the most disabled Australians. Um, there's, the, currently, we'll, um, there's 28,000 Australians that aren't uh, properly serviced under this scheme, and um, the government has made it, um, you know, open this up to migration or people looking to migrate as sort of a, a catch-22 in terms of solving two problems at once. Um, obviously investing in the 132 visa to become eventually become an Australian permanent resident, while also servicing the large shortfall that comes from, um, unfortunately, the, the um, comes from different disabled Australians. Wow. Yeah. So, you, so your company is associated with the... Yeah, so we're, we're fully, I guess, accredited and licensed to, to provide those solutions to clients, uh, working with the NDIS, um, approved property developers, um, seeking properties and also with the SDA which is specialized disability accommodation to ensure that the you know the solutions that are being provided to clients are approved and are, are acceptable for their for their needs. Mm -hmm. So migration is a very very wide scope uh, discussion we can we can take that. Um, so when we talk about NDIS and the special scheme and the 132A visa is that a particular field that we are touching or is it a can we include other visas in it? Yeah, so at this stage it, it's specific to the 132A. I'm sure, um, I mean, I'm, I'm sure the, you know, the government is always sort of re-looking at migration and, and how to seek migration to Australia. So I think, um, I think it would definitely be something that's, that's branched out on, but at the moment um, we've found, we've really started to operate in a niche that is in the one, solving the 132A visa and, yeah, trying to kill two birds with one stone in terms of you know, ensuring that um, you know clients are, can find a viable investment option for the 132A um, or the 132A business investor visa, um, as well as sort of uh, solving a problem that's sort of um, you know with the government sort of being proactive in solving a problem. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, uh, why is the government doing this? Yeah, that's a very good question. So, it's actually been um, recently uh, written into legislation. So, this isn't something that's sort of um, you know, a, a short-term government scheme. It's actually been fully legislated. Uh, the government has sort of, I guess, noted that 
Um, yeah, there are something like 28,000 Australians um, who may find themselves um, not fully serviced in, in, for their disability needs. A good example of that is perhaps when a, um, a young person um, may be involved in, in an accident of some description and rather than having specialised disability accommodation, they can often find themselves in aged care facilities, uh, which obviously don't, don't cater to their needs and obviously um, you know, don't provide a good result overall. Uh, and can also lead to sort of you know um, a huge demand on that on that part of the part of the sector. So um, there's definitely a, a, a scope for the you know basically saying you know the government's identified this problem and there there's a I guess a roundabout solution to it. Mm -hmm. yeah. When did this come into effect? Yep. So it's um, been phased in um, in two parts, one in 2013 and one in 2016. Mm -hmm. um, so it's now um, sort of passed through and um, yeah. It's you know, we're able to, to come to you today with sort of, uh, I guess, varying solutions on actually adapting and, and, and providing, you know, providing potential clients a, a way to, you know, migrate into Australia. Mm -hmm. So, Connor, you said that you like travelling and you travelled uh, a lot of places. Um, so, uh, migration wasn't your background, if I'm not wrong. No, definitely, right. definitely more of a finance and private banking. Right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, you have a team that looks after the migration part, but you are the finance part. Yeah, yeah. exactly right. We, we work with, I guess, um, a, a, a wide variety of migration agents. Obviously, uh, migration agents and migration lawyers, um, they can come in different different specialities and we can kind of offer our expertise to that. What we found was that um, obviously due to licensing and, and I'll be the first to, to say I'm, I'm, no mi I'm no migration agent, um, so it's similar with migration agents not being able to provide um, financial opportunities or financial investments to their clients just purely because it's, it's not in the client's best interest and, and obviously there's no, no licensing for that. So that's where we found the niche, we basically found that you know, there was there was an opportunity where these clients, you know, were, were wanting to come through the 132A visa channel, but weren't actually offered a, um, weren't able to identify a business or, or somewhere that they wanted to invest in Australia, um, and it opened it up to you know clients just being confused and, and obviously more work in, in the sector for migration agents and such. So that's that's the service we offer, and what what we can say is that we we basically. Offer the offer the alternative to you know um, investing in a you know investing in a startup for example or other businesses that might not be in the client's best interest. Yeah. yeah, that's great. So, do you take into consideration the regional areas or anywhere in Australia? Yeah, there's certainly. So, with with the NDIS housing and I guess that the solutions that's provided, they they generally um, they generally are tailored towards more. Uh, I guess regional and, and less populated areas. Um, mm -hmm. So most most commonly, you'll see them amongst um, Queensland uh, is a big one. Um, anywhere from Gold Coast to Sunshine Coast and, and west to Ipswich, um, but also you can find solutions in uh, South Australia, Tasmania, probably the next most common. From there, um, other states are, are viable and, and are available, um, but there's probably just not as much of a demand and not as much of a, a, an easy flow through process from mm -hmm. that. Yeah. So out of all the five uh, places, main states, yeah. uh, which is the most uh, important and lots of people flooding? Yeah, Queensland. Oh. Queensland? Queensland yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm biased because I'm, a, a, like I said, a, a born and raised Brisbane, Brisbane boy, but um, it's definitely, you know, it's very cliche, but you've got the beaches, you've got, and um, now with now with obviously unfortunate travel restrictions, I also yeah. found myself uh, exploring more of my own state, mm -hmm. heading up to North Queensland, um, planning to do that later in the year. So see the beautiful Port Douglas and Magnetic Island, and yes. everything like that. So <laughs> there's there's a lot that it can offer and a very a very uh, relaxed lifestyle. Um, yeah, if I seem relaxed right now, it's probably because I grew up in Queensland. Queensland. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Actually, you're right about everything about Queensland. It's so huge yeah. and so many beautiful beaches. Yeah. When I was coming to Australia, the first thing my friends were saying is, oh, you're going to Gold Coast. I'm like, okay, no, I'm going to Brisbane. Then I found out Gold Coast is amazing. The whole of Queensland is amazing. Yeah. So, yeah, people are flocking to Queensland now. Yeah, we're only about 40 minutes drive from it here, so we are, we are very lucky. Very uh, lucky. Can, can duck down on the weekend mm -hmm. outside of business hours and, yeah, soak up the sun. It's coming into summer, so... Um, good time to do it. Fantastic, fantastic. Connor, um, I want to know a quick uh, recap of when a client walks into your office, what can he expect from you? 
Yeah, absolutely. So if a client walks into our office, obviously we'll greet them. That goes without saying. Mm -hmm. But uh, basically, we'll we'll be able to just um, service them in a way that you know we can leverage off our our partners that we work with. We've got qualified partners, and and be able to advise and and consult them on on different business opportunities and opportunities to um, you know fulfill their needs, which in, in most cases will be to, you know, look at migrating to Australia and in the 132A business investor stream. Um, yeah, so that's that's generally what we do. Um, we do have some um, some referral partners as well if they, you know, anything from sort of looking for schools to universities to anything like that. Uh, we want to make it as easy as possible for them to actually, you know, amount, um, become one with Australia and, and move into Australia. So you help a whole family to settle down here? Absolutely, yes. We have done that on many occasions. So we, uh, yeah. Definitely, um, finding schools can be overarching even or overawing even for sort of um, average Australians. So, um, if we can take that out of uh, a, a new migrant of ours, take the take the trouble out of that, then we're more than happy. That to is do amazing, that. Yep. Uh, Connor. In the end, I would like to ask if you could want to share something to our viewers. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah, we're always happy to have a chat to anyone who um, might be interested. Um, it is something new, and and we're all about educating. So. If anyone likes to reach out, um, my details will be in the uh, in the video link. So uh, feel free to reach out and ask any questions, whether it's WhatsApp or, or WeChat. We're we're pretty flexible, and um, yeah, we'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much for joining, Connor, and uh, was a pleasure having you. No worries. Thank you, Rena. Much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be joining next week.